welcome viewers to the NPTEL lecture series on the calculus of variations. This is the last lecture, 20th lecture of the series. Uh, recall that in the last lecture, we discussed sufficient conditions, Jacobi's condition and Lysander uh, and Weierstrass function, where we showed that if Jacobi's condition is satisfied and if uh, uh, Weierstrass function uh, has po positive sign or negative sign throughout in uh, certain interval, then we get uh, minimum, strong minimum or weak minimum depending upon whether y prime is uh, arbitrary or y prime is to be assumed to close to uh, p. So, uh, recall that we had the functional. So, recall that we have the functional i y equal to integral x 1 to x 2 f of x y y prime d x, where the boundary points are given a x 1 y 1 and b x 2 y 2 are given fixed points. Here y 1 equal to y at x 1 and y 2 equal to y at x 2. So, the Jacobi condition that is the function u of the function u of the equation f y y minus d by d x of f y y prime times u minus d by d x of f y prime y prime u prime equal to 0 vanishes only at a that is x 1 y 1 on the interval x 1 to x 2 and this we have the existence of a central field at a x 1 y 1 containing the point b x 2 y 2. So, that is the Jacobi condition and then, then we need to check the sign of the Weierstrass function that is w which is function of x y y prime p equal to f x y y prime minus f x y p minus y prime minus p f p x y p. Here, y prime equal to p on the extremal y equal to y x c 0 passing through the points 
a x 1 y 1 that is the central center of the central field and b x 2 y 2. So, here we have uh, the extremal y equal to y x c 0 uh, which is fixed uh, c 0 is fixed value of uh, the parameter c. Uh, here y x c forms the family here. y equal to y x c forms the central field of extremals at the center And uh, for this c equal to c 0, we are on this extremal which passes through uh, the given points a x 1 y 1 and b x 2 y 2. So, we want to check whether the this extremal which is y x comma c 0 minimizes or maximizes the given functional i. So, here uh, we need to check that since here we have seen that uh, this delta i y as delta i y is the integral uh, x 1 to x 2 here w x y y prime p d x. So, we see that this delta thus hence delta i y will be greater than equal to 0 if w is greater than equal to 0 and similar delta i y be less than equal to 0 if w is less than equal to 0 and w equal to 0 on y equal to y x comma c 0 because here uh, this y prime equal to p. So, this these two terms will cancel and y prime equal to p here this factor will be 0. So, w equal to 0. So, delta i y equal to 0 if we ha are taking uh, y equal to uh, this is general y here. Uh, the any here this y is any curve joining these two per, uh, points. So, here situation is like this we have central field here at a like this. So, this is a x 1 y 1 and b is there on this x 2 y 2. So, this is the curve, this is the extremal y equal to y x c 0 and this is a family of extremals given by y x c. So, family of extremals y equal to y x comma c. So, here for c equal to c 0, we have this extremal which passes through these given points. So, we want to see whether this extremal is minimizing or maximizing the given functional i. And this any y here is this is general y x which this we had denoted as gamma 0 and this we had denoted as general gamma. And so, that is what we have here this on any general gamma joining these two points a and b. So, this is x 1 here and this point is x 2 here. So, we had seen that uh, in various examples that we calculated uh, w and we see that uh, when w is when w is greater than equal to 0 for arbitrary y prime then we have strong minimum and if w is greater than equal to 0 for y prime close to p, then we have weak minimum
and if uh, w is less than equal to 0 for arbitrary y prime, then we have strong maximum and if w is less than equal to 0 for y prime close to p, then we have weak maximum. Since uh, if uh, we have to consider y prime close to p, that means uh, we are considering uh, this in the uh, first order proximity. If y prime is arbitrary, then we are considering the zero order proximity. So, as defined earlier, we get uh, in case y prime is arbitrary, we get a strong minimum or maximum depending upon the sign of w. And in case when y prime is uh, to be assumed to be close to p, then we get uh, weak minimum or maximum depending upon the sign of w. And here checking the sign of in uh, various example, uh, we had considered here like in this case, we saw that uh, this uh, w expression comes out to be quite complicated and checking the sign of this is not that easy. So, we look for a simple condition uh, which would guarantee us the uh, same thing what is been concluded earlier like this. So, we just see that if we use ta uh, Taylor expansion here. So, w is f x y y prime minus f x y p minus y prime minus p f p x y p. If we expand assuming that y prime is close to p, then by Taylor uh, theorem. So, by Taylor theorem, Taylor's theorem, this can be expanded like this. Uh, so, you will have f here, this f y double prime prime into y prime minus p because here we expand this uh, in the neighborhood of p. So, this term will cancel and that first derivative term will cancel here uh, like this and so we will be uh, having this y double prime double prime. This is to be evaluated at some intermediate point like this, this x y p tilde into y prime minus p whole square upon factorial 2, where p tilde is p plus some theta times y prime minus p, where this 0 less than theta less than 1. So, we see that uh, the sign of w will then if uh, y prime is uh, close to that p and we see that the sign of this can be determined uh, by the sign of y prime y prime. So, here this, since this y prime minus p whole square on factorial 2 is positive. So, this sign of w then is sign of f y prime y prime x y here. So, we see that in the neighborhood of this p prime will be close to p in case uh, this factor is small here we see that uh, the sign of w if it can be uh, seen that if uh, sign of w is uh, sign of f prime y prime for arbitrary y prime then again we get here the uh, same uh, thing to be determined by whether the, uh, this sign of the uh, this is plus 1 or minus 1. So, like that we will see that hence 
f y prime y prime positive for arbitrary y prime then this w is greater than 0 for arbitrary y prime hence we get strong minimum if here if this. So, if f y prime y prime greater than 0 for y prime close to p then w is greater than 0 for y prime close to p hence we get weak minimum and if f y prime y prime is negative for y prime arbitrary then w will be less than 0 for y prime arbitrary and we get strong maximum and if this f y prime y prime is negative for y prime close to p then w is negative for y prime close to p hence we get weak maximum. So, that is what we have to check here that uh, f y prime y prime is whether positive or negative which is easier to check compared to the sign of w. So, that is what we will do in this example. So, let us say this is 20.1. Here we have i y equal to integral x 1 to x 2 y prime square minus y square d x and y at x 1 equal to 0 and y at x 2 equal to 0. Here we have this x 1 less than x 2 obviously and so here f is y prime square minus y square and Euler's equation f y minus d by d x f y prime equal to 0 implies that minus 2 y minus d by d x of 2 y prime equal to 0. This implies that y double prime plus y equal to 0 and so solving this we get y x equal to alpha cos x plus beta sin x and y uh, condition y at x 1 equal to 0 implies that uh, y x equal to some constant c sin x minus x 1. This has already been done. So, that is what we get here. So, we have this x 1 is somewhere here and we have x 1 plus pi. So, we get these curves here like this 
and we know that the Jacobi condition is that this x 2 must be. So, Jacobi condition Jacobi's condition would be fulfilled if this x 2 which is greater than x 1 it should be less than x 1 plus pi. If x 1 plus uh, if x 2 is greater than uh, if x 2 is greater than x 1 plus pi Jacobi's condition is violated. So, we need to have this x 2 here this point and clearly this y x identically 0 is the uh, is the extremal that is for c equal to 0 we have this extremal y identically 0 passing through a that is x 1 0 and b that is x 2 comma 0. So, this is the extremal here y identically 0. So, this x x is part of this axis which is passing through these two points this is a and this point is b here on the x axis. Now, we need to check whether uh, on this extremal we have maximum value of i or minimum value of i. So, for that we had checked it earlier by the sign of uh, w. Now, we check uh, we have to calculate this f uh, here f is y prime square minus y square. So, this implies that f y prime y prime is 2 which is positive for any value of y prime. Thus, we get strong minimum in this case. So, uh, this i y here will be having uh, minimum value strong minimum value uh, on the extremal y identically 0, which is actually 0 here. And so, now next we will consider the example of Rochester Crohn. that is 20.2. So, this is bra chistochrone which has come in our discussions at several points here i y is x 1 to x 2 root 1 plus y prime square over root y d x and we take y at x 1 equal to 0 and y at x 2 equal to y 2 this is strictly positive here. And we know that the extremals are or cycloids given by x equal to alpha t minus sin t plus beta and y equal to alpha 1 minus cos t. And here this at t equal to 0, so t equal to 0 we have uh, y at x 1. So, we are at, at t equal to 0 we are at we are at a that is x 1 y 1 which is actually equal to x 1 0. And so, it 
implies that x must be equal to alpha t minus sin t plus x 1 and y equal to alpha 1 minus. So, this is the one parameter family of extremals, so, one parameter family of extremals forming central field at A, which is x 1 0. So, that is the picture here we have. So, positive y will take like this and this is positive x and this is the point x 1 here and we have is cycloids going like this and here they then uh, go like this and so here we need to see that the, so this is the family of this is the central field at this is the point a and we need to see that b is somewhere here so this is x2 here so b is x2 y2 a is x1 0 like this so we see that here let's say let this alpha equal to c0 be the constant such that the extremal here x equal to c 0 to t minus sin t plus x 1 and y equal to c 0 1 minus cos t passes through the point B which is x 2 y 2. So, we see that this c 0 should be such that uh, it is not going to be uh, this that extremal where I mean this B point should be before uh, where these extremals start intersecting each other. So, that means we see that uh, this y will be 0. So, y uh, will be 0 y equal to 0 again at t equal to pi and so we see that uh, because here we substitute t equal to 2 pi then this becomes 0 and so y equal to 0 when t equal to uh, of course, when t equal to 0 here we are at a. So, there y equal to 0. So, y will be 0 again uh, at t equal to 2 pi and so then x will be equal to so at 2 pi this. So, c 0 uh, t equal to 2 pi minus sin 2 pi plus x 1. So, this will be so x minus x 1 must be equal to 2 pi c 0. So, that means here x equal to so x 2 must be so we have this x minus so x equal to uh, 2 pi c 0 plus x 1 that is where we will get the value of uh, y. So, for this we get y equal to 0 again hence this x 2 must be less than so this x 1 less than x 2 must be less than x 1 plus 2 pi c 0. So, this is the Jacobi condition then the Jacobi condition will be satisfied. Thus, we see that here in this case we have x 2 must be uh, like this that x 1 plus 2 pi this.
now we check in this case f y y f y prime y prime actually comes out to be in this case 1 over root y times 1 plus y prime square 3 by 2 which is always 0 for uh, sorry which is greater than 0 for any uh, y prime hence we get strong minimum in this case. The last example here which we have several times visited earlier x 1 to x 2 y prime cube d x and we see that here y at x 1 equal to 0 and y at x 2 equal to y 2 which is positive here x 1 is less than x 2 and we see that here these uh, extremals are y 2 over x 2 minus x 1 x minus x 1. So, here we see that p is y 2 over x 2 minus x 1 which is positive and here f y prime y prime comes out to be 6 y prime which will be positive if y prime is close to p that is y prime is positive and so we get weak minimum in this case and we cannot conclude more than uh, uh, this thing here we, we had earlier by directly seeing the sign of w we could say something more than this of course. Now, let us see that how we uh, actually get these conditions in some other way here let us say that this delta i y this is x 1 to x 2 integral f of x y y prime d x y is changed to y plus delta y and y prime plus delta y prime d x minus x 1 to x 2 f x y y prime d x and here this can be written like this x 1 to x 2 expanding it by Taylor series we get f y delta y plus f y prime delta y prime uh, d x plus you get x 1 to x 2 f y y delta y square plus 2 f y y prime delta y delta y prime plus f y prime y prime delta y prime square plus r which involves r involves only higher powers of delta y and delta y prime more than 2. So, here so that therefore, this i delta i y is delta the first variation here and plus this delta square i y plus r. So, this is the first variation and this is second variation which is the second term here plus r and the necessary condition condition that delta i y must be 0 then implies that delta i delta i y then finally, is equal to delta square i y plus r. So, the sign of the sign of uh, delta i y is decided by uh, delta square i y for small 
variations delta y and delta uh, y prime. So, we see that we need to check only the sign of uh, this. So, what we do here, we check, we note that this integral x 1 to x 2, this d of uh, some function, let us say w x of into delta y square is actually x 1 to x 2 w prime x delta y square plus uh, w x 2 uh, delta y del, delta y prime delta y d x. But on the other side, this thing is uh, w x delta y square evaluated at x 1 to x 2 and this is 0, because delta y delta y at x 1 as well as delta y at x 2 is 0. And so, uh, this term we can add to this. So, we have delta i y equal to integral x 1 to x 2. We add these things here, we get here f w prime x. So, f y. So, second variation here we will add in this we get f y y plus uh, w prime delta y square plus 2 f y y prime uh, w delta y prime delta y plus f y prime y prime delta y prime square d x. And we take this x 1 to x 2, this f y prime y prime we take out and we see that here we get f y y plus w prime over f y prime y prime delta y square plus 2 f y y prime plus w over f y prime y prime delta y prime delta y plus delta y prime square d x. So, we want to make this perfect square. So, we select this w in such a way that this is perfect square. So, that means the square of this must be this into this. So, there is 1 here. So, that means we have f y y prime plus w over f y prime y prime this must square of this must be equal to f y y plus w uh, prime over f prime f y prime y prime. So, that is how we have to check uh, we have to select this w in such a way. So, that means uh, we uh, take the substitution f y y prime plus w over f y prime y prime equal to minus u prime over u we substitute it like this and so uh, here w must be selected like this that it should be minus f y y prime uh, minus f y prime y prime u prime over u and so he, from here we see that w prime must be equal to minus f y y prime 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 means here d by d x. So, we will write it as d by d x, because there are other variables also minus uh, d by d x of f y prime y prime u prime over u minus f y prime y prime here u double prime u minus u prime square over u. And substituting it here, uh, we see that we get. So, this adding this to f y y. So, we will have uh, f y y plus w prime will be uh, this f y y minus d by d x of f y y prime minus d by d x of f y prime y 
u prime over u minus f y prime y prime or u prime u double prime minus u, u prime square over u square u prime square and so uh, here uh, we see that this is nothing but uh, so over uh, this this is actually equal to f y prime this is from here this is equal to minus f y prime y prime u prime over u. So, we see that uh, the last term here will cancel with this and simplifying this we get the Jacobi equation that is f y y minus f y y prime uh, d by d x of this u minus d by d x of f y prime y prime u prime equal to 0 uh, Jacobi's equation. So, which we had already got. So, if uh, the solution of this Jacobi satisfies that only at a it vanishes and not before uh, b then we get that uh, condition satisfied. And uh, so, next we see that here. So, using that we finally get this uh, delta i y comes out to be x 1 to x 2 f y prime y prime which we had taken out and this becomes perfect square here uh, f y y prime plus w over f y prime y prime plus times delta y and plus delta y prime whole square d x. So, clearly the sign of, so if f y prime y prime is positive we get delta i y positive, if f y prime y prime is negative then delta i y is negative and so this condition this this f y prime y prime positive this called actually Legendre condition. These conditions are called Legendre condition, Legendre conditions. So, we have the if Jacobi condition and Legendre conditions are satisfied, we see that uh, we get the required results that uh, in the case that f y prime y prime is positive, we get uh, strong or weak uh, minimum provided in the case what whether y prime dip, uh, is close to p is to be assumed or not. Similarly, f y prime y prime uh, negative would imply the strong or weak maximum depending upon the uh, arbitrariness of y prime or whether it is assumed to be close to uh, uh, p. So, now we have one more application that is in the mechanics it is uh, dynamics of particles. So, here let us say there are n points uh, p 1, p 2, p n particles moving in this space and uh, let us say their position vectors are r i t which is x i t, y i t and z i t, t lying between t, uh, t 1 to t 2. And so, here we uh, consider uh, supposing that that f i f i which is uh, f i i plus g i j plus h i k or in component form f i g i h i acting on these particles here i equal to 1 2 2 n and uh, we assume that uh, the system is 
conservative that is there is a potential function u such that it is f f i equal to minus del u over del x i and g i equal to minus del u over del y i and h i to minus del u over del z i. So, here we consider the fu functional h which is function of now x 1, x 2, uh, uh, x 1, y 1, z 1, x 2, y 2, z 2 and so on x n, y n and z n. These are functions of t and uh, we have this t 1 to t 2, we take t minus u d t, where t is the kinetic energy, t is the kinetic energy given by half summation m i x i uh, dot square and u is uh, the function of x 1, y 1, z 1 and so on to x n, y n, z n here. So, the Hamiltonian principle says that uh, the Hamiltonian says that the motion takes place place along the curves where the action is least. This is called principle of least action. So, we will establish this uh, thing uh, using the uh, techniques of uh, cal uh, the calculus of variations. So, we need to see that here we need to find the minimum of h. So, that means the Euler equation for this will be the system of Euler's equations are del over del x i of t minus u minus d by d t of t minus u of x i dot equal to 0. So, similarly you will have del over del y i t minus u minus d by d t of t minus u y i dot equal to 0 and the last one that del by del z i of t minus u minus d by d t of t minus u z i dot partially like this. So, we get here uh, t is involving only uh, dots. So, you will have minus uh, del u over del x i dot del x i minus here uh, t is only involving the dots. So, you get uh, minus uh, m i x i double dot equal to 0. So, we get here this minus minus sign. So, here this implies that m i x i double dot equal to uh, f i. Similarly, similarly we get m i y i double dot equal to g i and m i z i double dot equal to h i. So, these are the Newton's law. Newton's laws of motion. So, we see that which is, uh, uh, so this necessary condition here, the Newton's laws which are always holding and therefore, uh, the action will be taking uh, along those uh, curves where the action is least. So, like that we have uh, the applications of the calculus of variation in several fields, mechanics and optics 
and uh, dynamics and uh, various other problems can be tackled using the calculus of variations techniques. So, thank you very much for viewing all these lectures. I hope that this will be very useful. Thank you very much.